ordered selections. And another name for these, the sort of fancy name, is uh, permutations. We'll come to per uh, combinations a bit later on. But uh, you guys know how obsessed I am with the names of things. I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes. I will come back to it formally, or if I don't, remind me. Uh, I'll come back to why exactly they are called permutations a little bit later on, once we have a look at some examples of them. So here's where a scenario will begin. And this is the way, <coughs> excuse me, um, a probability question would usually begin, right? A three-letter word is formed from the letters A, B, and C. And then a probability question would then ask, what's the probability that if one of those words were chosen at random, that it's A, and then you can make up a condition. Like, what's the probability that the first letter is A, or the middle letter is A, or that the letters go in order, or something like that, right? But clearly, to answer any of those probability questions, you first got to work out, well, what is the sample space, right? What are the total number of things that you've got to choose from? And then you make that your denominator, then off you go, okay? Now, it turns out that asking that question, you know, how big is the sample space? How many different ways are there to do something? It is kind of its own category of question, and that's what ordered selections are about. We're going to focus now less so much on, on the probabilities, they'll, they'll come naturally later on, but just how many ways can you do this thing, right? Can you count the number of ways you can do it? Um, and this comes in the sort of bigger category, sort of a super category called arrangements, which is the other name that you'll often hear permutations and combinations, the topic, you'll often hear it called arrangements. So we're arranging items, and here we care about their order. A, B, C is not the same as C, B, A, um, and so we're treating them as different objects. So how many different ways is this possible? Now, here's a critical piece of information that is missing that will define which sort of, um, there are two different ways you could answer this question, and it's a piece of information you've seen many times before. Um, do you think you allow using the same letter twice? Well, when I give it to you in this form, you have no way of telling which one it is. Can you repeat? Repetition. Or are you not allowed to repeat? No repetition. And we're going to get two different situations for each, and we'll do them each in turn. Okay? Now, I know this is going to, you're going to look at this and say, why do we have to do this? I'm going to hopefully in about three minutes show you why. I want us to draw, because with probability, we would normally draw a tree diagram of some kind. Um, I can't use a dot diagram in this situation, why not? Well, not practically anyway. What, what situations do dot diagrams tend to be useful in? How many stages does a dot diagram take care of? We, we draw dot diagrams on a two-dimensional piece of paper, right? So there's like event one, Event two, you know, the first die, the second die, flipping coins, etc. But I'm asking you to work with a three-letter word here. So instead of a dot diagram, I'm going to go for a tree diagram. Uh, in this case, if I allow repetition, okay, let's think about what this will look like. Um, this is going to be a bit of a mess, so I'm going to um, cheat a little bit because I sort of know what the answer is going to be. And I'm going to draw the dot diagram, sorry, the tree diagram in reverse, um, because often, well, you'll see the problem that you can avoid if you do it this way. Um, I know that when I choose um, my letters over here, I can actually know how many I'm going to get at the end, because I allow repetition, so there's three every stage. And even, even having done it somewhat backwards, I've still struggled. So I'm just trying to make sure that I have all of my different options with a space, and then Here's my first choice. When you do this first one, have you ever had that problem where you draw a tree diagram and you're like, oh no, I have no space for anything by the end. So that's why these are really spaced out. Okay? Now, I've got all of my branches, now I can just fill them all in. And you might think, wow, this is a really time consuming process. I didn't, do we really need to do this? Well, there's a really important operation that goes underneath this that I need to whoops, illustrate through this very expansive and time consuming tree diagram. And don't worry, later on we won't need to draw these things. Uh, there we go. That C's there. Okay. Now, I could, if I wanted to, then complete the uh, sample space over here and write all of those three letter words out. But remember, the question I had for you before was, how many ways can I do this? I'm just interested in the total number, the size of the sample space, not the items in the sample space. Good morning. So if you have a look at this, right, when you're going from left to right, we've done this before, and you're reading across a probability tree, do you use, there's that key question again, addition 
or the multiplication. When you move it from left to right, what do you do? You can multiply across, right? We would usually think, say you multiply the probabilities along each branch when you're going from left to right. Now, I can use that same logic to think about, well, how many total outcomes will there be if I got every single one? I think I did, right? When you go from the first branch to the second branch, you go three, and then you, again, you multiply, because you're reading left to right, by three options each time, right? Three times three. And then when you go to the last set of branches, then you multiply by three one more time, right? Which is why if we count out, well, there should be how many options at the end? How many letters have I written down on the right-hand side? I'm not asking you to count them. I'm asking you to think. If I'm multiplying each time, three, multiply by three, multiply by three. I know it's early, but your brains can be that warmed up, right? That's 27, yeah? By now, you should have been able to count that there were 27, okay? So three times three times three, that gives you the whole number of permutations if you allow repetition, okay? Now, over here, if we don't allow repetition, mercifully, our diagram ends up much simpler because we've got much fewer options each time, right? So if I still start out with my first set of options, okay? If I choose A, we're used to this, I suppose we could say um, without replacement, right? Um, I no longer have three options coming out of A. How many do I have? Just the two, B and C, because A is no longer in the running. Same deal for B. Two different options, same deal for C. Two different options, okay? I've selected two letters. How long did I want my word to be? Three letters, so I've got one more to go. But here, after you've chosen A and B, how many choices are left? Well, there's just one. There's only one letter to choose from, so it's a bit of a funny looking tree diagram. You've only got one option left. Same deal with each of the others. You've only got one choice each time. You just have to look carefully and make sure you get the right one. Okay, now, this is small enough that we can count. How many different options do we have at the end? What, how large is the sample space? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six is the size of the sample space. And you can see why the same logic takes you from here to here. Uh, I start out with three options, right? And then for the next set of branches, I don't have three again because I don't replace. I don't allow repetition, right? So it'll be three multiplied by two. And then once I get to that last stage, you still have to choose a letter to have your three letter word, but you only have a single choice in each instance, right? So this three cubed give, gave us 27. This three times two times one, we have language for this, right? That we learned back in binomial theorem. What would I say here? This is three factorial, right? And that gives us the six. So as a general principle, if I did not have three objects, if I had n objects. If I had allowed repetition, then I would have n to the power of n. Like you do it the same number of objects that you've got. And over here, if you disallow repetition, then instead of n to the power of n, you're going to have n factorial. Okay, so this is a general rule that you can use.